let's first talk about the fundamentals of sound. How does sound work? How do we perceive sound? Uh, there's basically three parts to sound, or three aspects. The first is what we call pitch, or, or uh, the frequency of a waveform. If we think about how waveforms w work, there's a compression and a rarefraction. It moves up and it moves down. If we look at, at waves in the ocean, anytime we look at any kind of wave, there's always this up and down. So when we think about sound waves, it moves very much in the same way. We hear our frequency spectrum for the human hearing is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Anything below that is subsonic, anything above that is supersonic. Our lower frequency waveforms are much larger, because if you think about it, they, they have a much greater distance to travel. As we move up in frequency, what you're going to find is the number of cycles per second increases. So when we talk about a 100 hertz wave, that's 100 cycles, that's 100 ups and downs per second, versus 1,200, which would be 1.2K or 1,500, or say 20,000 kilohertz. You know, that's it's really, really fast. If you were to zoom in on it, you'd see lots and lots of little waveforms. So the higher the frequency, the more cycles we have to go through, the higher that energy is going to be. That's one aspect of the sound. Another aspect is what we call timbre, or harmonic content. This is what gives the characteristic to the sound itself. This is really what, what defines what's the difference between a banjo and a cello, or a trumpet, or a drum, or a clavinet. All these different instruments. Think about like a, a violin and a cello. Those are two stringed instruments. They're both played with bows, but they sound completely different. That is because of the harmonics. When we're dealing with a synthesizer, we, we're, we're actually combining different waveforms in order to create really unique sounds, unique timbres, unique harmonic content. We're going to take a look at waveforms in just a minute. The last aspect of sound that we have, or that we use, is amplitude. How loud is that waveform? How big does the waveform? If it's a, if it's a, a softer sound, you're going to have a much smaller waveform. The louder that sound is, the much bigger that waveform is. Think about your speakers. Your speakers are transducers. It's almost like a, the opposite of a microphone. They move in and out. That's why when you hear that low frequency, you're going to see the, the, the low end driver moving in and out. Those are your compressions and rarefractions. Your low frequencies, you can really see it. The high frequencies, it's so high that it's actually, you can't really see it moving. That's typically what happens. So now let's take a look at a synthesizer and how these three different aspects of sound are sort of contained within this unit. Uh, and the same thing applies to whether it's a software synthesizer or hardware synthesizers. Really, all of this is dating back to or is taken from the idea of uh, hardware and analog synthesizer. This goes back to the 60s and 70s. People were starting to, to come out with synths. The Mini Moog was one of the first. That was the first like suitcase synth, one that you could carry with you. All of these, uh, but they all have the same basic uh, principles in common. So, when we're talking about sound, that first principle of sound, which is pitch and frequency, where does that sound start from? So we're thinking about our signal flow. So if I hit a key on a keyboard, what it's doing is it's triggering what we call an oscillator. An oscillator is where the waveform starts. That's where the sound comes from. If we look at an analog synthesizer, they have a dedicated little circuit board. That circuit board, when we apply electricity to it, will generate certain types of waveforms. So if we look at our, our monolog here, you'll see that we have two oscillators built into it. What I'm going to do is actually turn down oscillator two, and we'll just focus on oscillator number one. Right now, oscillator number one is set to I'm just zeroing everything out. Oscillator number one is on a sawtooth wave. Let me turn that down a little bit. I'm going to keep going down lower on my keyboard, and you can almost hear the oscillations of the waveform. Oops, I've gotten too low. I'm trying to see how low I can get. So that's about as low as it goes. Not really an exciting sound, but you can hear it's almost clicking. That's because I'm playing that this sound at such a low frequency, you can actually hear the cycles going up and down. The down cycle almost disappears so you can't hear it. As it moves into the up cycle, that's where we're hearing the clicking sound.